have with me two very well-known composers, Marty O'Donnell and Mike Salvatore from Bungie. Welcome, guys. Howdy. Well, well, thank you for having us. This is great. Looks sharp, man. You like? You got the? You got? You got the? Conductor outfit. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that's what that is. Uh, you're going to be conducting something today, I assume. I'm conducting something from uh, Destiny, Music of the Spheres, an orchestral suite in eight movements that we're very excited about uh, releasing at some point in the future. And this will be movement two. So people will hear it for the first time right now. Awesome. World premiere, guys. Yeah. Uh, what can you tell us that's unique about this, this score that uh, is different from the other Halo scores that you guys have composed for? That's you. Yeah. Uh, you know what I would say that the biggest difference on this is that this is not a game soundtrack. This is something we thought, wouldn't it be cool to do music prior to the game that is sort of like a prequel to the game? that we can you know, continue to work with over many, many years because we have some cool themes that we're establishing right now. So it's a standalone work of music, just like the old-fashioned days when people wrote music to be listened to in concerts and on records. And we thought, let's start with music and, and see what happens from there. So this is an idea that sort of presages what Destiny's universe and world is going to be like, uh, but it has its own reason for being. It's music for the sake of music, but it reflects this coming world of destiny that we want the fans to enjoy. Awesome. And it's got some clues in it. I'll oh. just say this. Oh, really? Okay. No, did yeah. I say that? Clues? No. <laughs> You're going to make people, like, you know, try to find stuff out. Like scavenger hunt type of thing? Yeah. Like, you know. Well, sure, absolutely. Uh, there's a few things going on. Yeah. <laughs> Are they going to have to di dissect the music theory? And I'm looking for people who have some uh, music theory chops. It's okay. not just easy, you know, programmer type stuff. Okay. This, this, you got to have some, you know, you got to count count some intervals, do some math. Like, there might be some of that. Yes, uh, I would start by playing it backwards. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> well, that's because of you know who. Yeah. We haven't mentioned him yet, though. So oh. go ahead. Perfect. All right. Well, I'm sure there's a lot of questions from the from the chat here. So let's get started. Uh, let's see. Freaky idiot on a YouTube asks. <laughs> uh, when did you create your first piece of music, and what was it like to go from just listening to actually creating? I'm going to have Mike do that first. My first piece of music I wrote when I was about nine years old, and it was pretty bad. It was a song about my family. <laughs> um, yeah, yeah. and I knew, I knew I really was never going to be much of a composer, actually, at the time. That came later, I think. I think I'm still working on it, actually. But, <laughs> You're uh, doing fine. Am I all right? All right. <laughs> but yeah, I was about nine. Yeah, you know what? I was a piano major, and I, was, I, I just thought that well, all I needed to do was continue to study piano, and then we, you know, we'd cover other bands and I would teach everybody all the parts. And it, it was, I think I was 18, 19 years old and my drummer said, hey Marty, you know, you're really good at figuring all this stuff out. Why don't you just write some music yourself for the band? Yeah. And I'm like, can, I, can you do that? I mean, it seemed like a, a brand new concept. And I, I wrote something, I absolutely loved doing that and teaching it to the guys in the band. And I went right to my conservatory music professor and I said I'm switching from piano to composition wow. so I ever since then I've been a comp composer so yeah that's great uh, let's see live like a boss asks, what do you do in your free time hmm well right now in my free time I'm trying to make a lot more time for my wife so okay. we're taking vacations I and we got a little yeah I'm Mars <laughs> we have a little cottage up in a in one of the uh, chain them islands up in uh, Seattle and uh, you know so we're, we're actually spending a lot more time together so that's great perfect. I'd like to play monster with my grandkids no, it's perfect got so many I, I, you've got the voice you've got the voice yeah, oh, yeah. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> perfect awesome uh, cool so you, you're doing like the Pacific Rim monster Are we talking like uh... oh no I, I play dead I lay on the ground and play dead and they all come around me and then I come alive he's, oh. he's got 27 grandchildren no I don't okay so you do like more of the shadow of the Colossus type of thing like where you're like yeah, dormant yes. and then okay yes and when I'm chasing them I actually do the real slow thing you know I just oh. go like that yeah, yeah. they just go crazy <laughs> nice Mike's uh, easily amused by the way <laughs> All right, let's see. Oh, they're all flying here. Um, Liana asks, uh, would you work with Spielberg? Absolutely, yes. Sure. That's easy. We used to talk about when we were doing commercials, we would tell our secretary, yeah, hold, hold all the calls unless, unless it's Spielberg. Okay. And then if, if one came through, we'd look at like, each other like, oh my gosh, 
and of course yeah. she just goofed up. But you know what's it fun is really that him. like Spielberg, we actually did get to meet him. I don't think you were there, but we met him at E3 one what? time when he was playing Oni. Yeah, when we were working on Oni, and I, then he's okay. been to the Bungie booth at E3 a couple oh, cool. of times. So, oh yeah. So it turns out that he's like, yeah, he's interested in doing games now. And That's you know, great, as yeah. you know, he's done many different attempts at doing games sure, or sure. published games. So it's cool. Awesome. And you're, you're almost like kind of like his doppelganger a little bit, Mike. I mean, right? I mean, if people like me, like, Spielberg? What? Can I get your autograph? There was a time when people used to think I looked like him, yes. And, and unfortunately, when I look at him now and people tell me I still look like him, uh, that worries me a little bit. No harm intended. I think that was mean. Uh, let's see. Uh, let's see. Sick, Sick of Staff asks, what was it like working with Steve Vai? Oh. Back in the day, old school, yeah, old school question. Yeah, you know, Mike didn't get to come out when Mike was still in Chicago at that point, and Nile Rogers, who's a producer, who told me at one point, he goes, Marty, uh, we're working on Halo 2, you gotta get some, I can get you some other musicians, I'll get you Jeff Beck or Steve Vai, or, and he's naming all these people. I'm like, oh my gosh, of course, I'll take anybody. So <laughs> Steve Vai was in town doing a G3 thing uh, with Ingve Malstein and Satriani, and so Niall came out and said, let's record Steve. He's ready to go. He wants to do it. And so we spent like four hours in the studio. And it was probably one of the most memorable days of my life with another musician. And just we had all these tracks. We had him play over. And he improvised. And he played our melodies. And he had a really good time. And the end result was when he got done with his show later that night at the Paramount in Seattle, he came out and said, I just talked to my sons. They're so excited I'm working on Halo. They, now they think I'm cool. And I'm like, well, how's that possible? You're Steve Vai. You're like the, already the coolest guy ever. And he goes, yeah, my sons, they don't, they were like 10 and 12 or something. And because he was working on Halo, now he was cool. So that was funny. I have a, uh, after, after that session, Marty sent me the tapes. Oh, yeah. Three hours, I think, three hours worth of stuff. And I had to condense down everything he did to about a three minute piece. Okay. Yeah. And I just wanted to say that. By the way, we still <laughs> have a lot of lots of extra Steve Vai yes. material. I forgot about it's that. in the vaults. Yeah. He was just riffing. And, oh, yeah. He was riffing like crazy. It was uh, great. Yeah. It was awesome. awesome. Very cool. Okay. Uh, let's see. What is your, What was your favorite piece to compose for the Halo franchise? Triforce 11 asks. Uh, I will say the very first one for me. And uh, maybe it's just because it happened in such a quick time. It was We had a weekend to do it. Hey, nobody knew about Halo yet. You know, I, I remember coming over to Mike's studio at the time, and I said, it was our studio, but it was at Mike's house. Yeah. And I said, all right, here's my idea. We're going to start with monks singing. And Mike is like, well, OK. OK. So, and then we're going to go into cellos and percussion. And we started working on it. Mm -hmm. And uh, you know, the guys went for it. And then it, it took off. It had a life of its own. And it was just, it all happened very instinctually and, and naturally. And it was, it was a lot of fun. Yeah, same thing. The, 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 because it was so iconic, and the surprise of that ended up being the funnest thing. So that's always the, you know, the first. And as you know, Mike and I sang the monks together. Yeah, with, we with, did the thing. Was it four? Yeah, four five. other guys. It was a total of, of five all together. So it was just three other guys. Oh yeah, that's right. All right. B, okay, B Fet Nine asks, what's the most unique instrument you've used? Unique instrument? You, what's the most unique instrument you've used on a on a soundtrack? So. Hmm. Wow, that's interesting. I'm stumped. I don't know. Well, you know, we just used, I think for the first time we used a bass flute, okay. which I thought was really had an incredible sound. So it's not like it's obscure, or like some Middle Eastern instrument or something, but a bass flute is hard to find and hard to find people who play it well, and it, was, it sounded beautiful. So I agree. Yeah. <laughs> All right, excellent. Uh, let's see, what do you do when you have writer's block? Broken Muse asks. Uh, I, I jump in the shower. <laughs> that fixes. You know what I do? I just, I, if I have writer's block and there's a deadline, deadlines help writer's block a lot. Yes. Uh, and the other thing is, is I, just, I just put all the sequencers and technology away and I just get the, get, sit at the piano and start just improvising until yeah. I get happy again. Okay. And I usually break through it. Excellent. All right, guys. Well, thank you so much for being here and uh, look forward to hearing the uh, world premiere. Yeah. So. Perfect. All right. All right. We'll be right back.